Hey, and welcome to Brian Brain's National Curriculum. This is the quiz that the entire family can take part in, enjoy, and hopefully learn something from. OK, here we go. My name is Brian Brain, and if you haven't played before, don't worry, you'll soon get the hang of it. You might even want to create a prize for the winner or the winners if you decide to play as a team. Let's see if you younger budding brains can beat the adults, the boffs. You see, for every budding brain question for you kids, a harder boff question for the adults will follow. So everybody's got an equal chance. The most important thing, though, is to just have some fun and also to build that brain power of yours. Did you know that your brain works a lot like your muscles? The more you use it, the stronger it gets. So, today's subject is about our world. For year one, and we've mixed lots of topics up for you. So, for each question you get right, award yourselves a point. It's as simple as that. Don't forget to keep score as you go along, so you might want to get a pen and some paper before you start. Here's a bit of getting ready time for you. And, just before we start, I want to give you a really big tip or secret. Try and create pictures in your mind of both questions and answers. It's the most powerful tool you have to remember things. You hear about photographic memories? Well, everybody's got one, really. It's just that not everybody can get at it that easy. Pictures create the most long-lasting memories. OK, everybody ready? Good, then off we go. Budding brains, in which season would you be most likely able to build a snowman? Now you get a bit of thinking time. And I will repeat the question every time. So which season would you be most likely to build a snowman? Time's running out, and time's up, and, well, of course, it's winter. Everybody knows that, don't we, I hope? In England, it normally snows in winter, although in some years it's been known to snow even in summer. Now it's the boffs' turn. Boffs, what is the name given to any type of water that falls from the sky? You get your thinking time as well, off you go. What name is given to all types of water that fall from the sky? It's actually a bit of a tricky question. Well, I wonder if you got it. It's a precipitation. Precipitation comes in many forms, including snow, sleet and rain. I hope the thought of rain has helped wash the cobwebs out of your brains, ready for the rest of the quiz. <laughs> Budding brains, your next question. If a tree is cut down, what should we do in order to make sure that the tree is replaced? Here's your thinking time. What can we do when a tree is cut down to ensure that we don't lose a tree. Time's nearly up. And the answer is, did you get it? Hope you did, because it's plant a new one. If a tree was planted every time one was cut down, we wouldn't be gradually losing the Earth's forests. The trees cut down from most forests are big trees, but trees come in all sorts of sizes. And young trees grow into big trees. Buff question. What name is given to the miniature trees grown and nurtured as a hobby? Here's your thinking time on this one. What do we call the miniature trees grown as a hobby? 
and I'm not going to give you a clue. If it was a budding brain question, I would. Well, time's up. Did you get it? It's a bonsai. Bonsai or a bonsai? And did you know that although the word bonsai comes from Japan, the word is actually a Japanese version of penzai, the term used in China where the practice originates, although it was picked up by the Japanese thousands of years ago. Question number three for you budding brains. Which two colours are on the English flag? Here's your thinking time. What are the two colours on the English flag? to hurry you, shout out your answers, and time is up. The answer is red and white. The red forms a cross on a white background, known as St George's Cross. If you said red, white and blue, then you might be getting confused with the Union flag, which is the flag of the whole United Kingdom. Aha, remember that one. St George's Cross, red and white. And Bob's. What was the official language of England between that famous date of 1066 and 1362? Get your chops round that one. Here's your thinking time. What was the official language of England from 1066 until 1362? you and time's up well i wonder if you got that one because it wasn't english it was french french of all languages well how about that in 1066 the british crown was taken by william the conqueror who came from normandy in france and set french as the official language of the country bunning brains what continent is england in here's your thinking time what continent is England in? Have a guess, go on. And your time's up, and your answer is Europe. Europe. There are seven continents that include all of the land in the world. The one England's in is called Europe. There you go. Boffs, what continent is Kosovo in? Here's your thinking time. What continent is Kosovo in? Kosovo, even. Time's up. Did you get it? It's Europe, of course. It's a country that lies between Serbia and Albania. OK. As well as knowing about the countries and continents in our world, it's also important that we try and look after our world. Budding brains. What should we do with aluminium cans when we're finished with them? Here's your thinking time. What should we do with aluminium cans when we're finished with them? And time's up. Hope you got this right. Really important. You recycle them. Yep, you recycle them. Recycling is becoming more and more important to save the Earth's resources as well as energy. Recycling is where you reuse the parts that make up an object rather than throwing it into a big rubbish pile. Boffs. What is the atomic number of aluminium? And if you don't think it's related, well, most cans are made out of aluminium. Here's your thinking time. K. 
Cast your mind back to those school days. What is the atomic number of aluminium? 